What's up guys? What's the crack? Um want just to sort of have a look at this room here. And a friend of mine once said it's not bad for dust and water. So everything you see has been made from plaster. Even that picture reel is plaster. And the ceiling was replastered. And the cornice was all done in situ. The picture reel was run on a bench. And this is it all with a fresh coat of paint. Just touched up the walls. None of the walls actually needed re-skimmed. And the ceiling was bonded and skimmed as well. And I was asked about what way I'd go about it. So the lucky subscribers that did ask that question will get the answer. So here we go. It's bonding time. Now everything was PVA'd and scored. Well, scored and PVA'd previous this stage. And you'll notice I have my button ran along the bottom here. And that's plumbed off. Now the ceiling isn't bad in some areas, but other areas it's completely you can never get it level. So I'm just gonna have to go with the wall and then try to get that when I'm doing the ceiling, get the margins better then. And um, so when you're doing jobs guys, you just will encounter these things and you'll have to adapt to make the job look right. And um, some things can be off horribly and you just will not get them get them perfect. So you have to do what's what's best for the job. And um, using the gauge and shell, fill it out with bonding and then um, running it off with my running mode and this stage is called muffling out and again you don't gotta do this in situ and this is the way that the customer wanted it done so they asked they get they wanted it solid and this is the best way to do it solid it's not a bad way to do it guys it's pretty messy and probably does take longer and maybe a bit harder on the arms as well because everything's up above but the results should be the same yeah. hopefully anyway hopefully you agree but yeah let me know if you would have did it a different way um, comments are always open but getting it all built out first I have been building it out in sort of two hits hitting it with bonding giving it a strike and then what I was doing was I was hitting out, out another wall striking it off then it's going back to the, the first one if it had tightened if it was still wet on the ceiling and wall angle I was going ahead on the third wall like so just basically you want to build it up in layers it'll have more strength and it'll stay up if you do it in layers small stages don't try and do it all one go and um, actually you see have a bit too much on here so it was have to stop quite often there as you don't if you pull it all off mongo it can pull off on you and also you can drop a big mess of bonding on the floor do have everything covered up but you still don't want to be traipsing about on bonding it's sticky stuff make a mess of your stilts and just harder to clean up the more you spill so just trying to build it up in stages that's the way i would recommend it and um, think it's easier you could bonding takes quite some time to take off I'm not really worried about that I'm doing this last thing and then I'm gonna go home and come back the next day and start finishing it but basically you know if you want to do it the same day you could maybe mix a bit of casting plaster in through your bonding to make it set off or if you wanted to get some sort of half time bonding and get that into it it will set off quicker but again quite a large area to be covering here um, and doing in situ so didn't didn't feel like I needed to make it set and again I'm wanting it to set for the next day so I'm not really trying to do it in one day anyway I'm just getting it muffled out so on to the next day basically and using my casting plaster plaster of porous and you mix this different I'll probably have to do a video on this but you don't mix this the same way you mix plaster guys There's it's just it's a different world um, and again with the muff, muffle taken off my running mold I've now got the sink shown which is the metal blade 
Again, you could do it in wood. If you have very, very good carpentry skills, you could do all this in wood. And just rolling it all off again. And keeping my hand to the front, guys, so any excess is being fed back in. As you can see. Again, in situ, can be quite messy, so make sure you do cover up. And, you know, it's pretty, pretty sore in the arms. Glad I used the stilts. Don't get just quite as much power with stilts, but I didn't want to be putting trestles around the whole room or, or that there, so just found the stilts sped me up a lot better when I was doing this plastering part of the job. Um, can you guys let, let me know your thoughts? Um, is this a type of plastering that you want to see more of? Um, is it something you want to have a go of? Um, I'm by no means the best at this type of work. And like we say we're always learning but you might notice the big holes in the corners and the reason that is is the running mold doesn't fit in there because it's square so it won't fit tight to your corners so unfortunately you will have to do them freehand if you do you know if you're looking closely you'll see them gaps they will have to be done freehand and ruled off and um, joint rule uh, again you don't need to you don't have to use a joint rule, you can, you can cut something up, some type of metal and it will help you shape them corners and this is me just finishing off the last corner which I'm pretty happy about again, in situ, pretty slow when it comes to corners because you have to do them all practically freehand and um, you can see the holes in the walls from the bottom they're the touch ups as I was talking about earlier they all need touched up see the holes in the ceiling, that's when I know some of you are watching the channel quite a lot and that's what I do when I'm replastering ceilings any cracks, any pops of nails popped any screws that have popped even and any boards that have sagged all get re-screwed up so that there won't be an issue going forward for replastering and like I said, a subscriber did ask if I was doing cornice, would I plaster the ceiling first or after? Um, this might give a bit of an answer. Again, if I was maybe doing it off a bench, you know, it's 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 here or there. It doesn't really matter as much. And just if you watch what I'm doing here, and um, turned into a joiner for a minute or two as well. But the reason I'm doing what I'm doing here is the margin between the arcative and the cornice wasn't right, but my cornice was plumb, so. I put the level on the arcative and it, it was not plumb to say the least and there was room for it to move down on the edge that needed to go down so I pulled all the arcatives off to put them back on so that the margin looked correct so that the arcative was plumb and my cornice is plumb so you know <laughs> it it does make a difference like I said some things come up during a job that came up when I stood back and looked I was like Something's not adding up here because that button I had on was triple checked for level. I knew the ceiling wasn't right, but the ceiling can't be playing a part to the bottom between here. So put the lie detector on, guys, and you'll find out what the fault is. And you know, it's as simple as pulling it off and putting it back on, basically. Um, not not a joiner, but you know, this everything's cut for you. So it could all just go back on, same as. And uh, show you surely here at the bottom how much it actually was off, which some people may not see it, but some people see the tiniest things. And um, sometimes I notice things and I can't walk away if I don't feel that it's good enough, basically. Which I don't think it's a bad thing. I think most plasters are the same. They sort of have their eye for a bit of detail and they wanna you know, they want to make it as perfect as possible. All striding for perfection. So, if only the joiners had it did their job right in the first place, you know. But anyway, most joiners I know are actually very good. So, shout out to them. But, yeah, just a matter when you are taking off, if you're ever going to take off anybody's archives or skirting, guys, um, just do it very carefully. You don't snap it. Because if you do snap it, you may end up having to pay for the whole thing right round or you know fix it yourself but um that's that would be my advice on that and if you don't feel confident maybe you know just leave it alone so 
a quick look at the bottoms. You can see the mess that's been done here from from doing it in situ. So that side was actually okay. This archive has been cut, so there's a gap at the bottom here for the laminate flooring originally. But you'll see here what I'm talking about about gap. And if you pay real close attention, that's how much it was off that gap there. And you could see that a mile away. Well, I could see that a mile away on the between the corners and the art and it just wasn't wasn't to my legging. Here we are. This is actually the ceiling all on skimmed guys. And the reason I'm sponge floating it is because it blistered like crazy. Um blistered more than anything I've ever seen before, which really made life difficult. I had to sponge this whole ceiling. Just to get rid of them blisters. I'd have preferred not to sponge it, but you know, you have to do what you have to do. I could never have child them out because I think it just went a wee bit early. An absolute rookie mistake of going early. Um, felt like I was under pressure to get it on. As it tried, wanted to get it on during daylight. Plastering to lights. False lights, not always the best. And I had a nice big bay window here shining in. So that was the plan. And got it in. Alright. Um, again was was a nightmare but you know it all painted up not so bad and you just can let me know what your thoughts are again back to the, the point of plastering after the cornice or before the cornice I could have bonded and skimmed it all out previous but then when you're running you're running mold across you're only going to damage your ceiling simple as guys you're going to be leaving scores Gonna be leaving splats of plaster over it. Um, where my idea was, I could tussle in all my corners and have them lovely and neat and clean and tidy, and not have to worry about them. You know. Um, again, because I was doing it in situ, either way, I wouldn't really have to. You know, you probably have to touch up the ceiling if you were doing it in situ and you weren't plastering the ceiling. Um, did have to touch up the wall slightly, but it didn't actually damage the wall too much bar my nail holes that I have to go around and fill in but yeah again this is a completely different aspect to solid plastering it's diving a little bit towards the fibrous plastering and you can notice as well I'm sort of trying to work my way down on this job you'll notice that the the picture reel hasn't been fitted yet and it was quite tricky to make and to fit as well because the idea originally was to leave a gap behind for a small light to go in right round but the obviously we never broke into where the light switch is that might be a future patch up job if we do break into the light switch to get a bit of power around it um, but again it still serves its purpose as being a picture reel, which means you don't need to drill holes all over the walls. You can put your pictures where you want them. You can move them. You can move them for painting. You can move them for dusting down, for cleaning. You can just move them around, change them, put put different ones up. Gives you quite a lot of you know, a lot of options. And like I said previous, it's not bad for dust and water. Um, I will be doing more videos like this and um, well, obviously if people are interested I do like them myself so I'll probably post it anyway just for myself to be able to look back at and that as well. I'll try and get a couple of pictures of this cornus up close as well to show off the actual the details to it that's been put into it. Quite a lot of detail actually. So when it came to the corners it was a bit fiddly following it all. But glad to be done off it. Um, not not a type of work I do very very often. As well, if you if you want to go long and look through the channel, there is a few other jobs where I've done cornice in situ. So the only thing really to do is do it on a bench for you and show you that being done. Which this is the picture reel, which has a step step 
and there we round and then a step and this is it all fitted and painted and pretty pretty bright when I was trying to take these pictures and videos of it painted which made it quite difficult but let me know what you think in the comments guys more you say you weren't finished with the video we'll have a peek at this two scrim tapes and have a real good look at that guys who can tell me in the comments what's the difference between these two and why one was used quite a lot in making the small picture reel mold let me know your thoughts guys what was the difference between them two scrims and have you ever used them too? And yep, like I said, I went into that.